Hello there, Shiver, and all you scrappers. You may recall that in the previous video, I picked up three microwaves while I was out street scrapping and made the decision to bring those microwaves, along with all the other shred, back to the shark cage and have a little fun just taking a look at how much I would have made off of those microwaves if I just sold them off as shred versus how much I will make if I put a little scrap action on them. So when we last left the shark scrapper, he was at Mako speed unloading the shark mobile. So, now we just have the three microwaves. I'm going to work right out of the truck here. I have a mailbox for the little screws and nuts and bolts and things. A milk carton for the boards. We have two buckets here for wire and little motors. So, let's go ahead and get to it. So, the first thing we need to do is weigh up the microwaves as they are. Uh, that's 181. The cart is 43 pounds, so that's going to be 138 pounds. So if we had just gone straight to the yard and tossed these with shred, there'd be 138 pounds right there. And of course, time is a very important factor here, so let's go ahead and get our timer started. Now, folks have already started taking these apart, so that's going to help out a little bit with time. There's a motor and some wire and some more wire. I'm not sure exactly what's underneath this one, so let's go see. just a light bar so yeah they'll just that'll all be shred and I'm gonna put all the shred in this trash can um, because I want to be able to normally I would just chuck it right in that that mailbox that I mentioned but then I realized no I want to be able to weigh it up even the little bits because you know these little things can add up sometimes all right so here's the business end uh, we got to get the top off so we're just going to go around and start unscrewing things. There we go. So a security Torx, I'm sure most of you know this, but just in case you don't, the security Torx is a Torx bit, but it has a hole in the bit, and the screw has a little nub. They're just trying to make it more difficult to get into it for some reason. I don't know why. I tell you, if you're looking for some good schnips, these crescent, uh, these crescent uh, compound schnips, these are awesome. Uh, one of my one of my viewers sent these to me anonymously, so I have no idea who did it. Um, but I really love them. All right, so birdcage motors. Depending upon your yard, you may have to take the birdcage off. My yard, they don't care.
Nah, that's not stainless. No matter how much we want it to be, it's not. There we go. Now let's get those wires off there. I mean, get those boards off of there. Come on. Uncooperative little booger. So that's a low grade power board. Uh, you know, if you want to go in there, <clears throat> some people love to go into these and get the little silver dollop contacts and things like that. Um, I'm not gonna waste my time on that. And that could come off and go in with the motors also if you wanted to. So this board here has got these gold-plated pins on it. It's kind of a power board, but you could probably get away with going mid-grade. You could easily get away with mid-grade because you've got processors. You've got ICs, flat pack, the gold pins, maybe even peripheral. Uh, so that's going to be a better board than just the little grade. And this is the board that's driving the LCD display. So if you want to, you can pop off the LCD display. Uh, but, and you know, this board is a nice mid-grade at a minimum. Uh, you got IC, you got a flat pack, you've got nice big chunky uh, MLCC. And then underneath of the LCD display, you're gonna have probably some gold enig. Then we have, a, it looks like another low grade board down here for the keypad. Now sometimes you can get at the mylar relatively easy. For the keypad, sometimes it's more of a problem. We're gonna take a look here and see what we're dealing with. All right, so that can go with your low grade. Yeah, all right, I'm not, I'm not uh, shred here. The mylar is sandwiched inside of this whole thing, so I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna throw that in with my shred. And you see me throwing the screws down in here because this is all gonna go in uh, as um, shred, you know, just I'm just chucking screws down in there. Now we get to the business end here.
there's another motor down in here that's blowing a fan for cooling the magnetron. Here's another power cord and a low grade board. Another low grade board. Man, this this microwave has got all kinds of boards on it. Now we're gonna have to get creative and how that one comes out. This was kind of a high-end microwave, so a lot of goodies in here. Most of them aren't this good. Most of them don't have all this stuff. Here's another low-grade power board. Again. You can go for the copper coils if you want and the switches and things, but I just chuck them in with low grade boards. Cutting wire. Cutting lots of wire. All right. <clears throat> My yard does not care if I leave the connectors on, so it makes it real nice for me. But you need to know what your yard wants you to do. All right, now, this transformer you'll recall it did not want to play nicely so let's see if we can get it to play now there we go now that it got banged around and loosened up a little bit that's a capacitor I just throw that in with the shred and this fan don't forget the fan don't forget the fan, Sharky. Ah. Plastic trash and a little copper bearing motor. Magnetron, I don't mess with the magnetron. There's your magnetron. Like I said, some people really like to dig into these, get these aluminum plates. There's a little piece of copper inside there. I don't screw around with that. Wow, that, uh, that first microwave really really took some time there that was a that was a busy one they don't always they're not going to be that slow uh not all of them because that one that was that just had a lot of bells and whistles on it so uh, a lot of extra motors and uh, some extra boards and things like that to deal with so all right now got all the screws gathered up from that one uh, transformer let's check and see if it's a copper, a copper, or a copper aluminum. Copper aluminum. So, this will go in breakage. For my yard. That's the way my yard buys it. All right, well, this one is going to be really easy because somebody already uh, started taking it apart for us. Uh, 
So again, with the low grade boards, I'm just gonna price these out as low grade for this exercise. If you wanna go get these copper coils off, by all means, have at it. Get that transformer out of there. Just got the screws here. Helps if you actually put it in the screw head dummy. It just sounds ugly. Oh, it's another transformer. Let's see about that motor. Motor underneath of that. That's, eh, I don't want to bust, I'm not going to waste time busting that out just to get that little motor. Get this fan motor over here, right there. So that's the cooling fan for the uh, magnetron. little low-grade board over here there you go. that was for Ian the hammer time a good friend Ian loves good hammering Okay, so we have another low-grade power board. And then the rest of this is shred and trash. All right. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on over here. another security torques and another security torques that one's all security torques on the back side right away just check the fat wires first if anything's going to be aluminum it's going to be the bigger wires and that's aluminum so three of them and they were all for breakage what a bummer all right now We have this motor here. That's for turning the turntable. And there's a little board right there. Get that fan off of there. There you go. Uh, now, uh, some people bust out this thing. Uh, a good hammer blow should bust out the coil. 
uh, or if you have a bolt cutter or something like that to break it, then you can get the wires out, copper wire out of there. Or put it in with your motors. All right, let's see. We got that motor, we got that motor, we got that motor. There is nothing more to get on you. It is time to get some weights and let Geek Shark do his thing. Once we have dismantled everything, our shred is now 96 pounds. Copper aluminum transformers, 30 pounds. Number two insulated copper wire, 0 0.9 pounds. Yeah, we shifted to the other scale. Low grade boards, 1.58 pounds. Mid grade boards, 0.43, could be higher. Copper bearing motors, 7.11 pounds. And now it's time for Geek Shark. Okay, we are gonna get right into this because that dirty, sweaty shark took so daggone long breaking these things down. I thought he was never going to get done. All right, now, the whole microwaves, if we had taken those right to the scrapyard that is pretty close to that neighborhood, we would have had 138 pounds. They would have sold for 7.25 cents a pound, and that would have given us $10.01. Now, we didn't do that, though. In this exercise, we broke everything down. We ended up with 96 pounds of shred. And here's a little bit of a kicker. When I break stuff down at the shark cage, there's a yard that's just a half a mile away from me. They only pay 4.5 cents a pound. So I only would have gotten $4.32. Now, by the time you take the cost of the gas to go up to the other yard that pays more, it's kind of break even. But that's what I would have gotten uh, taking that shred to the yard that's right by the shark cage, which is what I probably would have done. Okay, breakage, that's the copper aluminum transformers, 30 pounds at 14 cents a pound, $4.20. Uh, those motors, 7-Eleven at 0.33 cents a pound, $2.35. Those mid-grade boards, 0.43 pounds, at a buck oh five a pound for 45 cents. Low-grade boards, one pound, 0.58, at 32 cents a pound. That would give us 0.51 cents, half a dollar. And then number two, copper insulated wire, 0.9 at 81 cents a pound, and that would give us 73 cents. So that would give us a grand total of $12.55. Now, the difference between the $12.55 that we would have made if we had broken everything down and the $10 and penny that we could have gotten if we had just gone straight to the scrapyard is $2.55. Now, not including the drive time, because that would just get things way too complicated, I spent 49 minutes breaking that stuff down. Okay, now, you know, maybe it was a little less because I had to, you know, walk him for the tools and stuff. But we're, you know, I mean, on the clock, it was 49 minutes. So that's 0.82 hours. So that means that breaking all that stuff down, uh, I made $3.12 an hour breaking all that stuff down. $3.12 an hour. All right, so here's what that's telling me. From now on, these things are just going straight to the shred place, which is paying me the most amount of money for my shred. Unless, unless I get a whole bunch of them and not much else. Uh, but even then, I got so much to break down at the shark cage. Do I want to spend my time doing $3.12 an hour when I've got computers stacked up that need my attention and wire that needs to be stripped and the list goes on. For me, eh, it's just not making any sense. So these are all going straight to the scrapyard. But for you, it might make sense. You may want that extra couple dollars. As a hobbyist, your time is less important than the money that you're getting for the hobby and the enjoyment of doing stuff. 
All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the video. That's the little round icon in the middle of the two links that are taking you to more shark scrapping videos. Oh, and the street scrapping video where I pick these all up, they're going to be linked in one of those links just in case you missed where I found these. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.